So, uh, we're making Scrapple, and I just thought I'd uh, make a quick video showing what we're doing here. Um, I grew up in Pennsylvania, kind of Pennsylvania Dutch country, and uh, Scrapple making was a tradition that uh, my grandfather, and my father, and the family would do pretty much every fall. And uh, uh, last year was the first I made it here in Alaska. Um, it's something I really miss doing. And uh, we, we successfully made a, b a batch of scrapple last fall. So I thought this year, I'll just kind of make a, a short video uh, showing what we're doing here. So um, traditionally, uh, this would be made in a cast iron butcher kettle, as we call them, over an open wood fire. Uh, I wasn't able to find any butcher kettles up here. Um, I'm sure that they exist somewhere in the state, but. What I did is I got a uh, I got a pressure tank here, picked it up for a few bucks uh, off the of classifieds. Somebody somebody's getting rid of it, and I cut the bottom out of the pressure tank, and I flipped it upside down and welded angle iron legs on it, three angle iron legs, and I I just put it enough height to it so I can put the turkey burner under. So I'm just using a, turkey, uh, a propane turkey fryer burner. And it really worked well. It really worked good. So um, I think we ended up with, I'm just working off memory, I think we ended up with like 13 gallons of scrap oil last year. Um, so we're doing it again and uh, just going to show some of the process. So. Right now we have 13 gallons of water in this kettle. Uh, we'll go into it when we get further on, but uh, last year when we started adding our ingredients, we had 10 gallons of broth. So I'm gonna add the pork uh, and then it'll cook. We'll let it boil for probably four hours, something like that. And then you let it cool down. We pull out the meat. Uh, meat will be off the bone by then, we'll get rid of the bone, we'll run the meat through the grinder, and we'll, we'll show that. And then we add the meat back into the broth and add uh, flour, cornmeal, and some pepper and salt, and then essentially uh, cook it until it cooks down, so it gets the proper consistency, and then we dip it out in pans, and that's the scrapple. So anyhow, um, just going to add, add what we got here. So. First thing I'll show is we've got strips of the, the pork skin. Uh, I just cut it into strips so that it cooks cooks better, and then when it's actually cooked, then we can run through the grinder. So we're just adding the pork skin, and this is uh, this is the pork pork hide, um, scalded and scraped. The hair the hair is all scraped out of it. Um, interesting side note: you know, traditionally you would scald the whole pig. Um, I don't have anything up here big enough to scald the whole pig. So what we've been doing, and it worked great last year, it worked great this year, we actually skinned the pig, and then I just scald the hide uh, in, the, in the kettle here that I made. Um, 150 to 160 degrees is proper scalding temperature. We just put the hide in there after it's off the pig and uh, scrape the hair out that way. So, so the hide's in there. Um, I like meaty scrapple. Um, I like a lot of meat in my scrapple. So I'm actually putting more meat in than what would be maybe traditional. I got some shoulder blade uh, ends here. I'm just going to throw that in there. Uh, another shoulder blade end. And again, the goal is to get more meat in the scrapple. This was a, this was a small pig. Um, yeah, it probably weighed 225 pounds if I had to guess. So I'm throwing a couple shanks in there as well. Um, Truth be told, uh, the scrapple's the, the my favorite part of, of butchering, and I actually prefer it to bacon and sausage. So, so that's what we're doing. You can see I didn't trim the bones too close because I want more meat in my scrapple. So that's a that's a hind leg bone, another hind leg. Uh, here we have the here we have the rib cage. Throw that in there. Here we have the spine and the essentially the pelvis, I throw that in there. So all this, everything gets cooked off the bone and then that meat, uh, that meat is what goes into the, makes a scrapple. Of course, here's the head, 
The whole, the whole entire head goes in there. Uh, that's just some, that's just some trimmings I'm going to throw in there. Pork heart. Got the liver. Liver goes into the scrapple. Got both kidneys. Pretty much any any edible organ. Pancreas. And I think I just got a few scraps here. So, you know, this was traditionally the way that uh, folks would make make the pig go a lot uh, further and make sure nothing goes to waste. So, as you can see, pretty much nothing goes to waste. Whatever doesn't go into the sausage or chops or bacon, we did we did get the pork belly slabs. We're going to cure in the bacon. And we're going to make a ham out of this one. But everything else goes into the kettle to get cooked off. Uh, and uh, turns into scrapple. So uh, we'll uh, we'll follow with uh, we'll, we'll let this boil for a few hours, and we'll probably shoot another video when we pull it out to grind it. So it's been four hours. Uh, this has been at a, a good boil for four hours. Uh, we just checked um, some meat came off a rib. The rib came out clean. So I'm going to shut the uh, shut the fire off underneath our kettle and. Uh, you can see it's boiling pretty good. Um, we're gonna. Uh, what we'll do is we'll pull all this out, and we'll grind it, and then we'll add the meat, the ground meat, back into the broth in the morning, and we'll do the, we'll do the rest of the scrapple making. So I'm just gonna go ahead and shut the propane off here. Okay. Let it cool down so we don't so we don't burn our hands. Uh, and then we'll run it in. Traditionally, back home, we'd we'd lay all this meat out on a big table and have some crackers and salt, and it was kind of a treat. We'd kind of help ourselves to various morsels of meat before we. Before we run it through the grinder, everybody kind of have their favorite chunk. Some of the best meat comes off the jowls of the head. As you can see here, I don't know if I can get some of it. The skin is very. That's some of the skin there. So that grinds up really nice. A lot of good nutrients and collagen there in that pig skin. Take some time to sort the bones out as well. You got to kind of pick through this, separate the bones from the meat, and then uh, and grind. So. We'll finish this process tomorrow. So it's had time to cool down. So I'm just just separating the bones uh, from the meat, and this is kind of a time intensive process especially if you're trying to get all the all the meat but um, separating the bones and here you can see I'm, I'm pulling the vertebrae apart and getting the, the good cartilage and stuff from in between so all that goes into the scrapple where that bone actually fell apart um, but yeah things are things are just pretty much falling apart so just a matter of separating the bone from the knot. Um,
And um, here you can see all the discs. Discs in between the vertebrae. I have no proof, obviously, but I suppose that consuming this material probably helps with the health of our own uh, spinal tissue. So everything that's going in here will get run through the grinder and then we'll add it back into the broth in the morning. Uh, we'll bring it up to a, bring it up to a boil and then we'll add the add the cornmeal and the the flour and the spices. Looks like a part of the skull there. So here's the head. We already had the, the jowl meat with some crackers and salt. That was always my favorite. But get the tongue out of here. Kind of gruesome looking, but it's all good meat. Lower jaw. Still kind of hot in there. Let that cool a little bit. That'd be the, the tongue. Yeah, that's still a little hot. I'm gonna pick through something else. But yeah, as you can see, this takes a little bit of time. Probably, probably the most labor-intensive part of it is separating all the bones from the. I believe that's a chunk of liver there. Separating the bones from the, from the meat. Takes a little bit of time to do that, but. Um, once that's done, and we grind all this, it gets put back in the broth, and it's then it's just a matter of adding the greens and, and stirring it. So, yeah, we'll uh, we'll show that a little bit later. I'm gonna probably spend the next hour or so here sorting meat. ground our, our meat that we pulled out of our broth. Um, have that right here. We have the fire going under our kettle again. Um, the, we have 10 gallons of broth in our kettle. Um, it's not quite to boiling yet, but I'm going to go ahead and add this meat. This meat got chilled overnight. We had it outside in the garage where it was cold. So I'm going to go ahead and add the meat. Because otherwise, if we waited until it came to boiling and then added the meat, it would cool it down again. So, so we're going to add the meat here, and then we're going to start and let it come up to boiling. When it comes up to boiling, we're going to add our flour and cornmeal mixture. So this is, uh, we have 10 gallons of broth. I'm not sure, we probably have, probably have three gallons of ground pork here. Um, this is everything that we pulled out last night. Um, we have 20 cups of flour, 30 cups of cornmeal, uh, one and a half cups of salt, and a cup of black pepper. And we pre-mix that. That's what you see here. That's all pre-mixed. So at this point, uh, I'm just going to add the meat into the broth, kind of stir it. And then once it comes up to boiling, um, we'll go ahead and add the cornmeal mixture. Um, once we add the cornmeal and flour mixture, at that point, you have to pretty much stir it constantly to keep it from sticking to the bottom of the pan. So, I'm just going to go ahead and start adding this meat in. As you can see, it really sets up kind of solid, um, especially once it gets cold. It becomes more of almost a loaf, but that's, uh, that's all the ground pork that we cooked off last night.
So if, if you were to just cook this down and with some salt and pepper, this would be uh, what they call puddings. Um, I personally don't really prefer that. I like I like all the meat in my scrapple, but uh, you know traditionally a lot of a lot of folks like uh, just the meat portion of this. They would fry it up and have that as a breakfast meat. Uh, I never really care for puddings myself. I prefer the meat to be in the scrapple. So we added our meat a while ago and now it's up to a good rolling boil. So we're going to go ahead and add our uh, flour and cornmeal mixture. I'm going to stir it in and add a little bit a little. I'm going to stir it in with this. I welded up a piece of, a couple of pieces of flat stock here made a stirrer. Uh, for in the cordless grill. So I'm going to add the cornmeal and flour. I'm going to stir it in with that. Uh, this works great for initial, but once it gets thick, then we'll have to switch to our hand stirrer. But for, for initially adding our uh, our flour and cornmeal mix, this works great. So, so I'm just going to add this little by little. Stir it in. So this stirrer works pretty good uh, until it starts to get thicker, and then we'll use the hand stirrer to finish with. Pretty good, pretty good stirrer going with this uh, while it's thinning. We got a 
and it mixed pretty good there. Yeah, be careful you don't splatter yourself with hot. Yeah. The battery's dying, I believe. Probably time to switch to the hand stirrer, anyhow. This works really good for initially initially mixing in the mixture. Really happy with it. So this is a scraper I made. This uh, kind of resembles an old butcher scraper that they used to use. I didn't have access to one, so I just took a scrap piece of flat stock and bent it and put a handle on it. And uh, once it starts to thicken up, then this is kind of how we'll have to how we'll have to start for the rest of the time. Uh, pretty hard on the drill to start once you get it thick. And it also, uh, it'll also really stick if you're not careful. So. Yeah, we might as well just get rid of these. Because as we're starting, we're going to have to go around in a circle. Uh, make sure that our scrapple doesn't start to stick to the kettle. Once we get to this stage, it's important to keep stirring regularly, uh, pretty much constant, because if you don't, the scrap will start to stick to the kettle. If it gets thicker, it, it can't circulate like you can when it's not. Well, this is pretty much the process until it cooks down, uh, until it cooks down to the point where it gets stiff enough, and then we'll we'll pour it in our probably probably take a good half hour of this. Um, Stir it like this until it gets stiff. Uh, and then we'll pour it out in our pans and let it cool, and that'll be our scrapple. So we've been stirring for about 45 minutes now. It's starting to get starting to get thick. We're getting close to being done. When it's done, uh, when you're stirring, it should be thick enough and you can actually see it pull away from the sides of the kettle as you're stirring. It's starting to do that, as you can see here. Uh, kind of starting to pull away when I'm stirring, but uh, it should, should even be a little thicker than this. And, you know, definitely, definitely pull away from the side of the kettle when you stir. So. I don't know, we probably got another 15 or 20 minutes. So we've been stirring this for about an hour and a half now. And you can see as I'm stirring, it's kind of uh, it's kind of congealed to the point where it's pulling away from the sides of the kettle. And that's kind of it's kind of the indication that it's done. When it stiffens up to the point where where it kind of pulls away as you're stirring you can see there it's, it's not really sticking to the sides of the kettle it's, it's kind of pulling away uh, it's, it's thickened to the point now that it, it, it's cooked down uh, enough of the water's cooked off that it kind of, kind of turns into a almost like a blob so at this point, uh, I think we're pretty much done. Um, it's cooked down enough, and uh, we're going to dip it out in the pans. Uh, turn the fire off underneath of it.
All right. As you can see, it's not really liquid anymore. It really sticks together. Pan's getting getting a little warm. pan of scrapple so once it cools down it gets uh, uh, hard and solid like a loaf and at that point uh, we'll cut it up cut it up into slices well we actually stored in loaves but when you're ready to cook it you cut it up into slices and fry it in the skillet about the consistency of it. It's nice and thick. That's what you want to see. This has, um, it seems to have some little clumps of flour and cornmeal in. I don't think it's going to hurt the scrapple at all, but I may have added a little bit too, uh, a little bit too fast when I was stirring in the, the flour and cornmeal. I maybe should have stirred it in a little slower. But, like I said, it shouldn't hurt it at all, but I think that that's why we're seeing some little clumps in there. All right, so here's uh, some scrapple uh, fried up in the pan, just about done. I personally like it crispy on the outside with some soft in the middle. Um, but if you smash this down even further, uh, you can kind of get it crispy the whole way through. But this is my preference. So I uh, generally have it cooked about like this, and then I like eggs over, over the top of it.